Hi everyone, welcome to the channel if it's your first time and welcome back if you are not new here. I'm about to set up my first month in the bullet journal that we started last week. I really appreciate all your lovely comments on how the setup went. I had a lot of fun making it and it's, it's really nice hearing that you guys enjoyed watching it. So thank you for that. And so now I'm getting started with the setup for the month of July for 22. And the country that we're looking at is Malaysia. Now, the first thing I have to say that I found bizarre about Malaysia is that I'd actually been there and not even realized, which sounds so terrible. But when I was a child, we went on a um, cruise with my family. It was like our one big overseas trip um, when, when I was growing up and it was, it was amazing, such an amazing trip. But the places that I did visit and didn't even really realize they were part of Malaysia was Kuala Lumpur and Langkawi. And I was only young, I was probably about 12. Um, but all I remember of Langkawi is I rode an elephant and I had my hair braided like a lot of us Aussies do whenever we go to Bali. We always get our hair braided. I did that in Langkawi and we sort of sat at the beach. It was a lovely time. So I, I didn't even realize that that was part of Malaysia, but now I do. And yeah, I've done some research and now I can go through with you what I learnt on my little expedition of Malaysia. So getting started with our cover page, I really liked the more conscious design that I had through my Chilean setup last month. And I thought I wanted to carry that through into this setup. A couple of reasons for that is one, it makes it more practical for creating and journaling, having it all properly laid out and it just makes it interesting to look at. And the other reason is I feel like these setups need to be more focused on my development as an artist while prepping for the month ahead. So for me at the moment, that means I want to work on my illustration style and really try to create pieces that work together throughout the spreads and that I feel excited to create as well. Um, I used to love drawing and painting with accurate realism and really tried to get a realistic finish to my art. But over the last few years, I feel so much more desire to explore other techniques and more illustrative styles that I want to do that throughout my setups as much as I can. Now, I still love realism and I don't think I'll ever let that go, but I want to be able to include other aspects into my work. So having said all that, I decided to use my Malaysian study as a source of inspiration to create some illustrations rather than painting of actual scenes and places from Malaysia. Now you did see me start with the jelly gouache that I had in my collection. I hadn't used that for a long, long time. So I thought I would try that one, but I have left it so long in the cupboard that it's actually dried out a little bit. And I think I could get it back to working properly, but I really wanted a nice opaque look and I wanted to be able to layer things if I could. So the only way to do that is by using an acrylic sort of based um, media. So I went for the acrylic gouache in the end so that I could get layers uh, because with gouache, it does reactivate with water. So although I could use the jelly gouache, it just wasn't quite what I wanted for this piece. I wanted it to be nice and opaque. Um, so I pushed that away, got out my acrylic gouache, my Holbein acrylic gouache, and started illustrating this. So as I was reading about Malaysia and its national animal of the Malayan tiger, I actually got pretty sad because it's on the verge of extinction. And just reading some articles about it gave me a little bit of inspiration to create something quite meaningful on the cover. Apparently there was less than a couple of hundred Malayan tigers left in the wild. And it was so sad reading how their numbers dwindled so much in the late 1800s. And most of the reason for that was hunting and deforestation. But Malaysia is made up of almost 70% forest, which is just incredible to me. And one of the world's oldest deciduous rainforests is here called Taman Negara. It's a huge national park estimated to be more than 130 million years old and where you can do trekking through the jungle, um, do a canopy walk, cave tours, rapids, rafting, and just in general experience a beautiful tropical rainforest, maybe with some bird watching in too. So I read that just recently in November of 21, the prime minister of Malaysia declared that he was determined to save the critically endangered Malayan tiger before it's too late. He and the government will be enforcing a 10 year plan where they will be ensuring more effective enforcement of wildlife conservation laws, reforestation to the peninsula Malaysia, and then strengthen tiger habitats through sustainable land use management and stop encroachment and illegal hunting. 
So all these plans were very promising to read and I think if they place priority on it, it would be such an amazing thing to bring back these tigers from the verge of extinction. And that sort of set me on a path of feeling inspired. I One, I love drawing animals, I love tigers, and I thought it would be cool to illustrate our girl who's jumping into these books and these these traveling these worlds and learning more about these cultures. Um, I thought maybe she could be helping to save the forest and bring back the life in the forest so that tigers will be able to find the right food and be able to increase their numbers by being that just that bit more protected. So I thought that would be a cute way to illustrate it rather than um, Rather than go for more of a realistic tiger and the forest, I thought I'd just try and get a little bit more illustrative and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the feeling of it, the vibe is what I was going for. Um, and then I also used the opportunity to do something graphic with the July font by going with sort of like a pattern and just using those colors that I've used in the painting. So trying to keep minimal yet graphic and hopefully powerful at the same time. So turning over to my calendar spread, where I usually keep the monthly things that come up that are just quite simple. Not much detail goes on here, just sort of special occasions, birthdays, and just any specific dates that come up through the month that I will then further flesh out in my daily sort of reminders and task lists. So on this calendar spread, I like to keep it quite simple. And this one even more so, I because I had done the national animal on the front cover, I decided to do the national flower of Malaysia on this spread. So the national flower for Malaysia is the hibiscus. It's a red hibiscus, which its proper name is called the hibiscus rosa sinensis. And it's a beautiful red hibiscus flower and looks very tropical and vibrant. So I wanted that to be the feature on this page and did chose to do like sort of individual days for the calendar this month. The main reason for that is because I wanted to give this page a little bit more of a, for lack of a better word, a designy look to it. And I think by having those individual boxes, it kind of gives you more space to work with and just a little bit more interest to the overall spread. Now, although you can't tell in this sped up version, but the cover page did take me a while and it was weird because I wasn't doing it realistically. I was working in this more graphic stylized way and yet it still took a really long time, probably more so than some of my realistic pieces. So I was a little bit surprised by that. And then I sort of said to myself, you know, I am on a time limit here as well. I need to get this, this cracking. I don't want to spend a hundred hours on my bullet journal setup. That's just not, not right. Um, so I wanted to keep it as simple as I could on these next pages. So I went back to my old faithful of line art and was really having a great time just using my Pigma Micron. Um, then I did want to add color though. So I started using some markers. But other than that, I tried not to whip out the paint again for this setup so far. I definitely will do it for my mind map, which will be in the second part of this um, setup, which will come out next week. Um, but for these first few pages, I wanted to try and keep it as basic as I could so that if you guys wanted to ever recreate these, you know, you don't feel that pressure of having to do a painted masterpiece for each page. Like I only try and do my cover page or the mind map as my real, real practice, like my art practice. This is how I keep my skills alive. And it's, it helps to have this inspiration of these countries. So by having those there, they're kind of like my star show pieces. And then the rest are just more what I feel like illustrating and drawing at the time. So what you're seeing here, me create this hibiscus was really fun to do and, you know, quite simple in terms of art. Um, I just used a photo reference, drew out my lines with my Pigma Micron and then just used two or three markers to color it in. So it gives a nice pop of color on the calendar spread and wasn't too time consuming. I am, however, getting a major Christmas vibe from this page, which is not intentional. I'm just trying to keep those oranges and green tones throughout this setup. But yeah, here it was just way too Christmas. 
So here's a look at how this minimal calendar spread turned out. Very vibrant pop of color, but other than that, it's quite clean and basic. And now I'm moving on to the next page, which is the spread that I keep my gratitude list on the left hand side and my meal planner on the right hand side. So as I said, I had used a lot of the time up on my cover page. So I wanted to keep this spread in particular very low key. So I only used my fine liner once I had got the sketch down and then also returned to an old favorite of adding some gold gel pen as well to add a little bit of accent. The Patronus Twin Towers are 88 story super tall skyscrapers in Kuala Lumpur, um, the capital city of Malaysia. They are the world's tallest twin skyscrapers standing at 451.9 meters high. They were built in 1998 and at the time were the tallest buildings in the world until 2004. And then from that time, 18 buildings have been built that are taller than them. I can't believe that, that so much has happened since 2004 in the terms of, you know, building massive skyscrapers. Um, the Patronus Towers remained as the tallest buildings in Malaysia until 2021, so just recently, when they were surpassed by Merdeka 118, which once complete will be 678 metres tall. What I found interesting though, when I was reading about the tower's design is that originally it was only designed to be 427 meters tall, but then the prime minister saw its great potential to be taller and got the architects and engineers to figure out a way to increase the overall height just a few more meters. So it eventually got to be 452 meters by adding those iconic spires to the top. So this is the part that I decided to draw on this page. I liked the description from the architect, which was about designing the building in an eight pointed star shape, which when seen from the top, of course, which was basically representing the unity, harmony, stability, and rationality of the Islamic cultures. So I thought that element was really nice and could be a nice to tie to a quote as well. I just think those attributes that it represents is nice for the gratitude page which I decided to write the words thank you in Malay language which is Darimakasi. So in case you're not aware this is the page where I throughout the month if I'm having a moment of appreciation for what I have I will write it down here. It is quite therapeutic and it's very grounding and I think it's a really good habit to get into. I still haven't got to the point where I'm doing it daily or even weekly but throughout the month when I do have that moment I reach for the journal and I write what I can at that moment. So it's a really nice thing to have in the journal. I'm enjoying this spread a lot. Um, and now moving on to the meals page. Now this one I am just writing these these titles in a really kind of sketchy loose way and I really like the font that came out of it so I decided to continue that over onto the meal spread and this one I wanted to keep with that sort of the style that I did the calendar page for where it's just the three sides of the boxes I think that looks quite nice and then the meal that I wanted to focus on I normally look at the national dish and finally I was able to draw the national dish a lot of the time it is like a, a stew or casserole kind of thing which just isn't very interesting to draw and this one I at least had a little a little pang of inspiration and it was something so delicious um, it's called nasi lemak and it's basically a coconut milk infused rice dish and it's usually accompanied with um, things like egg or cucumber and uh, a little bit of chicken or some other delicious sauce with peanuts and things like that so it just looks delicious it also comes served on like a banana leaf or at least in the imagery that I found it was anyway so I've sort of tried to illustrate the rice dish on top of one of those banana leaves not that you can tell from this black and white line drawing but the intention was there food is a big part of the Malaysian culture and Everything I read sounded so tasty and delicious that I wish I could remember eating it when I was 12. 
<laughs> but I'll get there. I will get there again. And I'm actually really keen to take the kids to Malaysia after researching it a bit. So it's now on the bucket list. And this is how this page turned out. For the next page, the goodliness page, which if you are new here is where I track my good habits each day. And I tend to print my little calendars out for this page because I don't fancy writing one to 31 uh, several times. But if you want to go ahead and do that, you obviously can. But just thought I'd mention here that I do sell these bullet journal themes each month. They are available on my website or as part of my Patreon tiers. Um, if you want to have a look at what I offer on Patreon, the links are always down below. But if you're wanting to buy this theme, it is available on my shop. And actually, it won't be available until the second part is out as of next week, because I don't want any spoilers happening. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a look into that, then feel free. All the links will be down in the description box. Um, but what I wanted to dedicate this page to was something that I've wanted to do for many, many years. And that is to volunteer for one of the orangutan and wildlife sanctuaries in Borneo. I haven't got the chance to do this just yet, but I really hope I can in the future sometime because I always say that in another life I should have done zoology or zookeeping. I just love, love animals and the thought of being able to volunteer with a place that would dedicate their time to rescuing the animals of the world, I feel that I would just love to be part of that. So one day, hopefully I get there and uh, are able to see these guys up close and personal and help them. Um, but yeah, so the orangutan can be found in only two little places on our giant globe, and that is in Sumatra and Borneo. So Borneo is politically split between three countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. And Malaysia's largest mountain, Mount Kinabalu, is also here on the island of Borneo. And in case you picked it up and I didn't mention it on the cover page, in the background I actually drew the silhouette of Mount Kinabalu as well. The mountain and its surroundings are among the most important biological sites in the world, with between 5,000 and 6,000 species of plants, 326 species of birds, and more than 100 mammalian species identified, which I found very intriguing. So among this rich collection of wildlife is the orangutan. And also there was this gigantic rafflesia plant, which I don't know if you've heard of, I had never heard of it. Um, the rafflesia plant is, I kind of wanted to draw it, but the description of its smell is so foul. Apparently its nickname is the stinking corpse lily because it has distinctly strong smell of rotting flesh. Ew. <laughs> so I decided to skip drawing that one, even though I was tempted and decided to focus on just the orangutan hanging around in the rainforest with some exotic fruit. <laughs> Now, did you know that the word orangutan means man of the forest in Malay language? I really loved that little fact. I also learned a couple of differences between the Bornean orangutans and their Sumatran cousins, and the fact that they are more likely to walk on the land beneath the trees, whereas Sumatrans are mostly arboreal with stronger social ties, where they're more likely to hang out in the trees together eating fruit, unlike the solitary Borneans who have broader faces and shorter facial hair. Um, I've actually also always wondered about the big cheeks that some of the orangutans have, and this is a male feature, but some males don't have it. They're, it's just called flanges, the flanges around the cheeks, and um, randomly some, some males have it and some males don't. But yeah, I think it would probably be in the animal kingdom like a sign of more alpha male kind of style but you know I really don't know that part I made that part up but I've also illustrated two types of fruit that are found a lot in Malaysia and that the orangutans love to eat so one is the lychee yum and the other is the durian fruit which is the world's smelliest fruit but is a well-loved staple in the Malaysian diet it is so stinky however that it is banned from some hotels and public transport and I bet that is because tourists probably complained at some point. 
I watched a quick YouTube video on people trying this fruit and it was so funny. The differences in how to describe the taste and the texture from each person, it was bizarre. I'll link it below in case you wanna check it out. Um, but yeah, not a fruit that I'm that keen on trying to be honest, but I love the look of it. It's like a nice spiky pineapple looking fruit and I thought it would be nice to have that in this, um, this little illustration. Now, as you can see, I sketched this one out with my Pigma Micron Fine Liner and then colored in the background in black to give it that real contrast. And after that, I decided to stick in my calendars and then add some color to it. And here I realize I tell a fib, I did bring out the paints one more time in this setup and that was just a little touch of it for watercolor on this page, just to give some quick splash of color to each of the items in this illustration. And I'm really glad I did. I love the color choices. I think they look really um, flattering on the page. So I've gone for that classic green, a nice lychee red shade, and then a nice burnt orange for the orangutan itself. And I think just by adding this much little bit of watercolor just adds a lot of color and interest to the overall spread. Now, as I mentioned, this is just the first half of the July setup. If you do want to watch the rest, however, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more art based and journal creating ideas. Um, if you liked this video, I would love it if you'd leave a thumbs up on it to help it in Google. And don't forget to check out those links I mentioned before. I've got uh, discount codes down in the description box and the other social media places where you can find me if you want to see more of my work. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I hope it inspired you in some way. I will let you know what the winning country is for next month's setup and I am very pleased to announce that we are finally heading to the African continent and we're going to explore Kenya. So I am stoked. I can't wait to look into a whole new continent and I'm hoping there's a lot of animals <laughs> I'm thinking there might be um, so if you want to see what I create in the August setup do stick around for that next week I'll be back with the rest of this setup and we'll also be revealing the choices for the month after next which will be the September choices so if you want to make a vote for the countries then please come back next week and until then, I hope you have a fabulous week and a great night wherever you are. Take care of yourself and somebody else and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.